Now that the glue is dry and that part's built, not finished, but built, we're going to move on to the base. I should probably attach this to a tripod before everyone starts vomiting uncontrollably from the moving camera. This here is a one inch diameter, three foot long shaft. I ordered this from Granger. It's some type of steel, I don't remember. This is a one inch square tube that I've cut. I got three of them, they're cut to a foot. I wanted one foot so the, the spread of the legs stuck out further than the, the diameter of the wheel. And what that does, it makes the, the base stick out farther so it's a little more stable. Also these sticking out make it very, very convenient to stub my toe and break it. And I'm going to stick these on at kind of an angle. You might notice this is not 90 degrees. When I cut these, I cut these with an angle grinder. They're, they're kind of not straight because incompetent at cutting. But I'm, I'm going to own it and weld them on at a slight angle. So when I have three of them, three because a three-legged stool doesn't rock, but a four-legged one does, the tips of the feet will touch the ground, not the middle. That'll make it more tip resistant. It's all about preventing the wibbly wobbly. And I'm going to tack them on and then set it down and see how reasonably unstraight this is, and then weld it up and figure out any rocking later. I'm using a MIG welder. MIG because, well, a couple reasons. One, it's super easy. Two, I'm out of practice with the TIG welder, and three, you can't really clean the inside of these shafts all that easily. So if you weld, if you, if you TIG weld, you kind of get penetration down in there, which I'm going to, especially here in this corner, because this doesn't fit perfectly. Uh, it brings those impurities into the TIG weld, and the TIG welder really doesn't like that. MIG welder really doesn't care. So, uh, yeah, MIG weld it is. ground clamp and the test doesn't rock my tacks can hold my weight that's a good sign the shaft isn't too crooked might be leaning that way like one degree two degrees or as I call it good enough now I gotta weld these up now, I don't know how I'm gonna do this probably just gonna fill it up with wire this bar is solid and these are only eighth inch thick wall so that's there's a lot of wire I need to fill in there to connect them up solid Uh-oh, starting to burn back on the square tubing. There, it's ugly, but it's holding. Man, I haven't used the MIG welder in like three months and it shows, this is terrible. All right, those welds may look terrible, so I have two choices, grinder or ignore it because you're not gonna see it. I choose choice number two. You may have noticed this pole is really, really long. I don't know how short to make it. First, let me test. Yeah, that's pretty sturdy. I don't know how short to cut this, so we're gonna find out with a little test fit. Okay, it's that much too long. It is 14 inches from the bottom of this to the bottom of this. I don't want to cut all 14 off, so maybe 13? One and three eighths. Okay, so I'm only gonna cut off uh, math here. Someone help me. Someone help me with the math. 12. I'll just cut off an even 12. That's fine. <laughs> oh, this is heavy. That's kind of the point, though. One inch thick. Time for the grinder to earn its keep. Guess who has a brand new one inch piece of rod? Off to the forge this is gonna go. Okay, what you can't see is that this is all gross looking. And I don't want a gross looking top. I'm gonna make kind of a, a dome on the top here because the weight, the, the wood is going to sit on this uh, so I want some of the downward force to be on top of here but I want this to be a bowl so if it's, if it's flat there's a lot of surface area for friction if it's a spike there's a tiny surface area but that's going to dig in so then the wood is going to end up pinching on the corners of the spike so I'm going to go for a gentle dome the design I found showed a ball sitting on top I don't have a little ball, maybe a marble would be perfect for that. I don't have one of those. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut the top of the ball on this shaft. And if that doesn't work, I'll improvise later. Hey 
Hearing protection, very useful for that. Also, this, paste wax. One of the best ways I've found to stop steel from rusting and to reduce friction. I've put this on, I always put this on the bottom of my wood planes. By plane, I mean like plane, I put it on the uh, sole. And what that does is it allows it to, uh, it stops it from rusting, for one, and it allows the plane to slide across the wood very, very easily. So there's no, no friction, there's just slicing of the metal. But I'm gonna put this on there to reduce friction and uh, hopefully build up a bunch of it in the hole of that thingy over there. I'm gonna dig it out of there. This is a pretty new bottle, I forgot I bought more of this. Ooh, it is still kind of toasty though. Look, the, the wax is smoking. That can be a good thing though, because one of the one of the blacksmith finishes for uh, for what's it for metal? Of course, duh, for metal is to heat it up so that it's not red hot, but it's it'll make it sizzle and put uh, uh, what's it called linseed oil on. So the the steel kind of being hot, it's expanding and opens up some of the pores, and then the heat also makes the the oil, or in this case, the wax, a little more fluid, so it'll flow into the uh, the pores of the metal, and now when it cools down, it's kind of more protectant. I hope that applies to paste wax. Now let's give it a test fit again and see how we like the height. Yeah, that's pretty much pretty much perfect. Cool. And with the waxing, it spins better. Oh, this is kind of wobbly. Gonna have to break out the anvil and fix that. But look, it spins pretty good. That's without the bearings in it even. Okay, so to figure out the high spot, Get spin. Okay, so I gotta whack it here, really hard. Drive that down. It's still very wobbly. Bigger hammer time. Okay, if that didn't do it, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm just going to shave the top down. Yeah, it's still high in that same spot. Good enough. We'll get the rest by shaving the top level then. Okay, so moving on. I got two of these. These are flange bearings, one inch. These will bolt on the bottom. These have uh, set screws to set them onto the shaft. Notice how it's kind of loose in there because uh, the, the wood on the metal is not a very low friction situation and that's not how I wanted to keep it centered and moving smoothly. I wanted to use ball bearings. These are rated at a huge amount of weight. It's only like 1800 pounds or whatever. Uh, so they're more than good but that's just that's just how they are. One inch. They are oilable. They have oil fittings. Ball bearing. Four big bolts into the bottom of the wood. Set screw onto the shaft to keep it all from wibbly wobbling. And bingo! Here's where I got the bolts. They're big stainless bolts. They'll fit through there. There, They'll go into this. I'll have to pre-drill, obviously. Got some washers. And you know how this, this is like, this is literally the simplest part of this entire build. So uh, probably just fast forward through that. Actually not so simple, because this isn't sitting straight. So I don't have these, these panels on quite square. Um, probably just going to ignore that and keep going. And if anyone has a plan for how to cover up these spikes of death, uh, please let me know, because that's going to become a problem at some point. Okay, I only put in two bolts top and bottom, because man, those things are, they go in hard and my air compressor is not plugged in. So it's not pumped up, can't use the thingy. Uh, I also tightened the, the lock, the kind of set screws on these collars, top and bottom. And now, we're gonna see how it works. Oh, this thing is heavy. Oh, it's heavy. Moment of truth. It works. Looks kind of, looks kind of wibbly wobbly. Right there, wait, wait, test. Does it work with a kick? Yeah. Yes! Functional parts done! Now I just have to fix all this unevenness. How am I going to do that? Okay, 
I'm ready to get off now. Somebody make it stop. Anybody? Hello? Uh, uh. Okay, I got the wheel. I got a seat set up about where I think is correct. Let's see, I can, I can kick with my right foot out. I want it to go this way. Or I can pull with my, uh, with my other leg in. You can always flip directions. I damaged the top here with my christening. That was a dumb idea. Got a few tools, sponge, chamois, stick, some other junk, and a lump of clay. I don't know exactly how big it is, like a pound-ish, maybe a little more. We're going to try making something. I don't know if that, uh, that wax coating I put on here is gonna affect this sticking, but we will find out together, I suppose. <clears throat> I think that's the middle. No, that is not the middle. One problem I'm noticing grip with my shoes. Grip's not so good. I'm gonna try that again. That was no, no bueno. Uh, there's center. I should probably mark that. Yeah, that's still pretty bad. But we're gonna go with that. I've never used this before, so this is this is the first time. From the videos I saw, it looked like to center, the people had to keep kicking, which is awfully slippery. The kick wheel down there is awfully slippery. Trying to keep the sponge in my hand to keep it wet. The momentum does hold pretty good. It certainly does not help that my stand that my chair is on is wobbly. That's gonna cause some problems perhaps. And my right leg is getting tired already. Let's switch to the other leg. Nope, hamstrings are weaker. Okay, another problem. It's sliding away from me. No idea what I'm trying to make, by the way. There's so many different ways of doing every single step that I have trouble figuring out which one to follow because it's like everybody has credentials and conflicting advice. Some say use the sponge, some say sponges are bad. I don't know anymore. We'll say this, it's very difficult to do the hand part and the foot part at the same time. I mean, I don't have any practice with it, but it's like I brace on my legs and my legs have to move. Well, there's a cylinder. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just randomly shaping this lump. Maybe I'll switch to this tool. Cut that base a bit. I don't know. Got caught. Put a big gouge in it. And I am definitely just screwing this thing up the more I do that. Notice the shaft must have a little wobble in it. I think the stand being so wide, it's allowing a little bit of flex in the legs. Might have to add some bracing. I am not having good luck controlling the speed with this either. Gonna have to figure out a way to reduce the wobble, the shake of the wheel. That's what happens when you make stuff yourself. It never goes right. I can get the rest of this in trimming or, you know, just smash it. No, I'll probably keep it. Even though it sucks, I'll keep it just for, you know, the memory. I know. I'll add decorative lines because of artistry. Don't know why I'm spinning it. I'm pretty much done. All right, cut off wire. And there we have it, a pot. Eh, that's too slippery to pick up. Oh no. Eh, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it. Every time I touch it, I ruin it some more. Like that.